Welcome to Jeremy's IT Lab. This is a free, complete course for the CCNA. If you like these videos, please subscribe to follow along with the series. Also, please like and leave a comment and share the video to help spread this free series of videos. Thanks for your help. Also, remember to download this practice lab from the link in the description and try it out yourself in Packet Tracer. If you want more labs like these, I highly recommend picking up Boson's NetSim for the CCNA. Click the link in the video description to check it out. It's a network simulator like Packet Tracer, but it's even more powerful, less limited than Packet Tracer, and it includes plenty of pre made labs with detailed instructions to help you practice and learn. I have collapsed all of the other sections here network fundamentals, IP connectivity, IP services, and security fundamentals. But the labs that are relevant to what we're studying now are here, in the network access section. Configuring VLANs, VLANs, deleting VLANs. These two are about VTP, which will be covered in Day 18's lecture video. VLAN configuration, trunking. Stick around to the end of the video for a preview of a lab that is relevant to what we're studying today. And once again, click the link in the description to purchase a copy of NetSim for CCNA. I used NetSim for my CCNP, and NetSim alone was more than enough labbing practice for me to pass all of my exams on the first try. Let's go back to Packet Tracer. In this lab, we will configure VLANs, specifically VLAN trunking, as we covered in Day 17's lecture video. This is the same network topology used in Day 17's lecture video, only the IP addresses have been changed slightly. So let's get started with Step 1. Step 1 says to configure the switch interfaces connected to PCs as access ports in the correct VLAN. I'll go on switch 1 first. Enter privileged exec mode with enable, then global config mode with configure terminal. So there are two PCs in VLAN 10. Let's configure those first. Interface range F01 to 2. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 10. And the switch creates VLAN 10 for us. OK, that's all for these hosts. Next up, VLAN 30. Interface range F03 to 4. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 30. Once again, the switch creates the VLAN for us. OK, that's all for switch 1 for now. Next, let's go on to switch 2. Enter privileged exec mode with enable, then global config mode with conf t, configure terminal. I'll configure VLAN 20 first. Interface F01, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 20. Next, VLAN 10. Interface range F02 to 3, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10. OK, step 1 is complete. Step 2 is to configure the connection between switch 1 and switch 2 as a trunk, and allow only the necessary VLANs. We should configure an unused VLAN as the native VLAN, and also make sure all necessary VLANs exist on each switch. I'll return to switch 1 now. OK, let's configure the interface. Interface G01. If you remember from the lecture video, in some switches we have to use the switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q command before configuring the interface as a trunk. Let's see if we have to do that here. Switch port trunk, then use the question mark. As you can see, there is no option for encapsulation. This isn't a case of packet tracer not supporting the command but rather it's because this switch itself only supports .1Q encapsulation. As I mentioned in the lecture video, modern switches often don't support Cisco's ISL, since the industry standard .1Q is used almost exclusively. So we can go straight to the next command, switch port mode trunk. Now let's allow VLANs 10 and 30. Switch port trunk allowed VLAN 10, 30. Why don't I need to allow VLAN 20 on this trunk? I already explained this in the lecture video, but
but it's because no hosts in VLAN 20 are connected to this switch. If PC5 in VLAN 20 wants to reach any hosts here, its traffic will be sent to the router first, which will send it back to switch 2 in VLAN 10 or VLAN 30, which will then send it over to switch 1. Watch the lecture video again if you want a more detailed explanation. Okay, finally, let's set the native VLAN to an unused VLAN. Switch port trunk native VLAN 1001. You can use anything here, just use an unused VLAN. Now, do all of the necessary VLANs exist on this switch? Let's check. Do show VLAN brief. We have VLANs 10 and 30. Looks good. We don't need to create any more VLANs. Okay, now let's go to switch two. Interface G01. The configurations will be the same as on switch one. Switch port, mode, trunk. Switch port, trunk, allowed VLAN 10, 30. Again, VLAN 20 doesn't need to be allowed. There are no VLAN 20 hosts connected to switch one. So switch two doesn't need to send VLAN 20 traffic along this trunk. Okay, next set the native VLAN. Switch port trunk native VLAN 1001. Okay, that's all for the configuration of the trunk. Now, do all necessary VLANs exist on the switch? Do show VLAN brief. We have VLANs 10 and 20. Let's do another show command. Do show interfaces trunk. So VLANs 10 and 30 are allowed on the trunk, which is good. However, look under here. VLANs allowed and active in management domain displays only VLAN 10. That's a problem. It means switch two won't actually receive VLAN 30 traffic on this trunk. That's because VLAN 30 doesn't exist yet on the switch. VLANs 10 and 20 were automatically created when we configured access ports in those VLANs, but VLAN 30 wasn't created. So let's make it. VLAN 30. Exit. Do show interfaces trunk. Okay, now you can see that it appears here. That's all for step two. Step three is to configure the connection between switch two and R1 using router on a stick. Let's quickly do the configuration here on switch two first. It will be mostly the same as the G01 trunk, except we must allow all three VLANs. Interface G02. Switch port mode trunk. Switch port trunk allowed VLAN 10, 20, 30. Switch port trunk native VLAN 1001. That's all for the switch. Now let's go on to R1. Enter privileged exec mode with enable, then conf t to enter global config mode. First, let's enable the physical interface. Interface G00, no shutdown. As I have said many times before, Cisco router interfaces are disabled by default. Now let's configure the VLAN 10 sub-interface. Interface G00.10. This sub-interface number doesn't have to match the VLAN number, but you really should make them match. Okay, let's set the VLAN number itself. Encapsulation, dot one Q, 10. Finally, the IP address, which should be the last usable address of the subnet, according to the instructions. IP address, 10.0.0.62, Okay, that's it. I get the question sometimes. Why does the router address have to be the last usable address? Well, it doesn't have to be, but you should have a system you use, either the first usable address or the last usable address as the gateway address for the subnet, so there is consistency across the network. Don't just use a random address for the router, or it will be difficult to understand things in a large network. Okay, now let's configure VLAN 20's subinterface. Interface G00.20. Encapsulation. Dot one Q twenty. Once again, set the last usable address as the router's address. IP address ten dot o dot o dot one two six 
255.255.255.192. Okay, finally is VLAN 30's subinterface. Interface G00.30. Encapsulation.1Q 30. IP address 10.0.0.190 255.255.255.192, which is the last usable address of the VLAN 30 subnet. So that's all of the configurations for this lab. Next up is to test connectivity. If everything is configured correctly, each PC should be able to ping any other PC. I'll do some pings from PC7 to test. Let's ping another PC in VLAN 10, PC1. Ping 10.0.0.1. Okay, no problems here. Let's watch the ping in simulation mode. Okay, send that ping again. Ping 10.0.0.1. As you can see, because PC1 is in the same VLAN, the same subnet, PC7 sends the frame directly to PC1. No need for inter-VLAN routing. Now let's go back to real-time mode and try to ping PC5 in VLAN 20. Ping 10.0.0.65. Okay, the ping works. Uh, let's take a look in simulation mode. Ping 10.0.0.65. Notice that the ping has to travel to R1 first, before being sent back to switch 2, and then to PC5, and the reply follows the same path. Okay, back to real-time mode. And finally, we will ping PC3 in VLAN 20. Ping 10.0.0.129. Okay, the ping works. And once again, let's take a look at it in simulation mode. Ping 10.0.0.129. Once again, the ping must go to R1 first to be routed, then goes to switch 2 and switch 1 before reaching PC3, and then it follows the same path back. Okay, that's all for this lab. Okay, let's move on to the Boson NetSim preview. I've selected one lab here, Inter VLAN Routing 1. Click on the lab and you get a little preview, and then click on Load Lab. And here is the lab. There's the objective here, the lab topology. This is very much like the lab we just did. One router, two switches, and some PCs connected to each switch. There is a command summary which shows you all of the commands you need to know to complete the lab, and these are all commands you already know encapsulation.1q to set the VLAN on a router subinterface, some show commands, show MAC address table, show running config, show VLAN brief, and switch port commands, access VLAN, switch port mode, switch port trunk encapsulation, and then next the IP addresses on each device. So let's go to the lab tasks. There are three main tasks for this lab. Task 1, configure the switch and PC hosts. Task 2, configure sub-interfaces. And task 3, complete and verify connectivity. And each of these tasks has multiple subtasks, multiple steps. So for this preview, let's just do task 1. This involves configuring basic network connectivity on switch 1, PC1, and PC2. So in this lab, PC1 and PC2 are connected to the same switch, but the users belong to different departments within the company. So your task is to assign the two PC hosts to separate VLANs within the network. Okay, so uh, step one, verify the current IP configurations on PC1 and PC2. And verify that they match the IP configurations listed in the IP addresses table. So this is the table with PC1 and PC2's IP information. So to check the configuration on each PC, we first have to go into the CLI. You see by default, we are in router 1 CLI. To access the CLI of separate devices, here under devices, click on PC1, 
click on console, and let's open PC2 console, and also we will be using switch one. So I'll click on console here. Okay, first let's go to PC1. To check the IP configuration on a PC, use this command, IP config slash all. So here is the IP address, 192.168.100.2. That is correct. The subnet mask is correct. This is a slash 25 prefix length. And the default gateway is dot one, which is correct. And that happens to be the IP address of R1's F00.10 subinterface. So PC1's okay, let's check PC2. IP config slash all. 192.168.100.130 is correct. Same slash 25 subnet mask. The default gateway is dot one two nine, which is correct. And this is the IP address on router one's dot 12 subinterface. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, configure switch one with the appropriate host name. Let's go to the CLI of switch one. You can see it has the default host name of switch. So let's change that. Enable conf t hostname switch one. There we go, the hostname has changed to switch one. Okay, each PC is a member of a different department and belongs in a different VLAN. PC1 belongs to VLAN 10 and PC2 belongs to VLAN 12. Do VLANs 10 and 12 exist on switch one? So you can check that with the command you already know. Do show VLAN brief. You can see all ports are in, sorry about that, in VLAN 1 by default, and VLANs 10 and 12 do not exist. So we can go on to step four, which says if the VLANs do not already exist, create VLAN 10 and VLAN 12. Let's do that. VLAN 10, and then without exiting from here, we can go straight to VLAN 12, exit, and then hit the up arrow. There we go, do show VLAN brief, and you can see both VLANs were created, VLAN 10 and VLAN 12. Okay, next up, step five. There is no documentation present about your network, so you must learn which ports PC1 and PC2 are connected to on switch one before adding each PC to the appropriate VLAN. How would you go about discovering which port each PC is connected to? So this might be a little bit of a challenge. I'm gonna exit out of here and then I'll go back to the PCs, PC1. So what you have to look for here is the physical address. Physical address, what is that? Well, it's the MAC address of this PC. So take note of these last four digits, 3538. And now on switch one, let's check the MAC address table. Show MAC address table. Now notice here it's MAC hyphen address hyphen table. On some newer devices, you'll probably find it as show Mac space address hyphen table like this. Now let's see if this switch supports the command. And it does not, so invalid input. So on this switch, we will use the show Mac hyphen address hyphen table command. I think I mentioned that in one of my previous videos that you might find it with or without a hyphen. So we were looking for 3538. And you can see the switch has learned it on port fast ethernet 03. So PC1 is connected to fast ethernet 03. How about PC2? Here's the physical address. Uh, take note of the last four digits again, 6059. 6059, that is fast ethernet 04. And just to check, let's look at the diagram up here. Okay, so PC1, fast ethernet 03. PC2, fast ethernet 04, so we were correct. Okay, so add V PCs to the correct VLANs. So, conf T, uh, PC1 is connected to fast ethernet 03, so interface F03, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10. Okay, now fast ethernet 04. Switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 12. Okay, uh, step seven on switch one, verify your configuration. 
I'll just get out of here, back to uh, privileged exec mode, and do show VLAN brief. Okay, in VLAN 10, we have fast ethernet 03, which is connected to PC1. And in VLAN 12, we have fast ethernet 04, which is connected to PC2. So our configurations are correct. Okay, next, issue a ping from PC1 to PC2. Why does the ping fail? So we're expecting this to fail, but let's do the ping anyway. Ping 192.168.100.130. So these pings are gonna fail. I'll just wait for a few to go through. Okay, so why are these pings failing? So these two PCs are in separate VLANs, so they need something to do uh, inter-VLAN routing for them, and that would be router one. But we haven't configured any inter-VLAN routing yet. So for example, on switch one, let's see if we even have a trunk interface configured here on fast ethernet zero one. Show interfaces trunk. Uh, no, we do not. You can see fast ethernet two is uh, a trunk connected to switch two, but fast ethernet zero one is not a trunk. How about on R1, do we have any uh, sub-interfaces configured? Uh, show IP interface brief. No, no sub-interfaces configured. So router on a stick, our inter-VLAN routing is not configured, and that is why the pings failed. Okay, so there are two more tasks, configuring sub-interfaces, complete and verify connectivity. I'll let you guys do those on your own. And if you ever have any trouble or wanna check your solution down here, our complete lab solutions. So for task one, uh, you can see the IP config all command we used, uh, configuring the host name. This is show VLAN. I use show VLAN brief, but show VLAN is okay also. Uh, configuring the VLANs and everything we just did, looking at the physical address, the MAC address. Okay, so once you're done the lab, click here, grade lab. Now we're not finished, so it's gonna tell us that we uh, did not complete the lab. We didn't do it correctly, but that's okay. There you go, you missed one or more commands in the lab. So you can see here on switch to PC1, two, three, four, the configurations are fine. That's because we didn't have to do any configurations on these, but we're missing configurations on router one and switch one. So these commands in red are commands that we missed. So we were gonna set the host name on router one Configure sub interfaces. How about on switch one? Oh yeah, configuring fast ethernet zero one as a trunk. Okay, so that's all for today's NetSim preview. If you want to get a copy of NetSim and try this lab and many others on your own, follow the link in the description. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and share the video with anyone else studying for the CCNA. If you want to leave a tip, check the links in the description. I'm also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or basic attention token tips via the Brave browser. That's all for now.